Welcome to my channel, Such Plants. I'm Simon, and in this video, I'm going to be setting up my brand new hobby greenhouse. I think what I'm going to start with is why I have decided to get a greenhouse. Like a lot of us out there that have started collecting plants, it gets very easy to collect a little more than you need and they take over every surface in your house. For me, they were on everything, on every windowsill, on my dining room table, on my coffee table. There wasn't a place in my house that didn't have plants and there wasn't a room in my house that didn't have plants. So I thought, uh, let me rather spend the money, buy a greenhouse, have one place that will be easier to look after all the plants. Um, it, I wouldn't have to go room to room to check and water. It was becoming a very high maintenance kind of thing. When they were all in one place, it would be much easier to look after them all. And also it would give me my house back and I would be able to have space that didn't feel cluttered and felt like more like a human space and not a plant space. Once I decided that I needed a greenhouse or wanted to get a greenhouse, the next question was, which greenhouse was I going to get? Um, I went online and I did some research and I found a website that had multiple options, obviously ranging in size and price. And what I decided eventually was to go for the biggest greenhouse that I could afford. I knew that it would fill up pretty quickly. And I knew also that the bigger the greenhouse, the more stable the environment is going to be for the plants. And I just thought rather go for something that I'm not going to regret six months down the line and wish I'd gone for something bigger, even though it did stretch my budget a little bit. Now that I decided which greenhouse I was going to get, I had to decide where I was going to put it. There were multiple options at my place. I have a reasonably sized garden. So um, there was a space on my patio that I could have put it on, uh, although it would have then made that patio pretty much only the greenhouse space. I also had another space a little bit further into the garden, but it was full sun. And eventually what I decided on was putting it into one of the corners of my garden that was shaded by trees and got dappled sun through most of the day. Because I was growing plants that didn't need full sun and would actually thrive better in a shade environment, that's where I decided to put it. The buying process was fairly simple. I just contacted them. They, uh, I think I ordered it on the Monday paid for it. By the Wednesday, it was packed and shipped up. It was coming from Cape Town and being sent up to Joburg overnight on a courier. It was delivered by Friday. I had a look at the instructions over the weekend and I got to say they did look a little confusing, but I know a lot of the time when you're setting up things, stuff like this little DIY um, furniture and that kind of thing, sometimes once you start working with it, it's pretty self-explanatory and you can figure stuff out. So I just decided to go for it. I knew that I was eventually going to need some help. So I had already spoken to a friend of mine, Stevie, and asked him if he would be able to come and help me. But on Sunday morning, I wanted to get as much done as I possibly could by myself. So I started the process without him. I began with the base that the greenhouse would eventually end up sitting on. Uh, after putting all the pieces together, I made sure that they were all level and measured corner to corner to make sure that it was square and not slanted in any way. Uh, it took me about half a day to set up the back and the front. That took me to lunchtime and that's when I called in my friend. It was actually the perfect time because once we got down to carrying on with the build, it was definitely a two, probably three person job. Okay, so I've just finished the back panel. There it is, over there. It was a bit rough going, quite slow going, made a couple of mistakes, but I think now that I have an idea of how this thing comes together, I think the rest of it will hopefully be a little bit easier. It is now 11 o'clock, so we're almost halfway through the day. That is frightening. Uh, but hopefully once Stevie arrives, then things will also get much easier. I'm pretty sure that once I have a second pair of hands on here, it will be a much, much faster process. It's also hot, really, really hot.
day one. Work. End of day one. All in a day's work. Steve, you wanted to finish. I do. I always want to finish. <laughs> oh, Isn't that well. the goal? That is the goal. To get to the end. Oh, my dinosaur back. But we will... I'll send you pictures tomorrow. Or maybe you want to take the day off work. Maybe you pull a sickie and you're like, Oh, <coughs> so sick today. Can't come in. <laughs> I do have a post-COVID cough. Maybe, it's, uh, maybe you can like use that to your advantage. So by the end of the first day, we had gotten to a point where we had basically set up the most of it. I still had to set up the vents on the top and do the doors on the front, but it was looking like a greenhouse and I could see the size and it was looking amazing. On day two, I started with the vents. There was a lot of back and forth taking stuff apart and reinserting. So in some ways, I feel like the instructions could have been a little bit more detailed in, in, as to what was coming next. And the way that it worked was the nuts and bolts slid into sort of pathways. I'll give you a close up of how that worked uh, in here now. These are the panels and how they work. Basically what happens is you slide your bolt up into this groove here and then put the nut on when you get to the right level. All of those bolts need to be added into that panel before you do this bolt. All of these bolts have to be already in place because it's impossible to get them in once that bolt is in. So basically what happened a couple of times was that it would give you the instruction to insert this bolt and do it. And then later on, it would say, oh no, now you need to put this strip in and you'd need an extra bolt in there which they hadn't told you to insert. So then you have to undo this bolt pull it out, slide a new bolt above it, hold it there with some press tech, re-bolt this, and then slide it up and put it into there. So a lot of the times you had to undo something, add in a bolt, send it up, and so there was a lot of uh, back and forth with that. But at the end of the day, it took the two full days, and I think that's what they recommended it would, it would take. So it's the end of day two, and I am mostly done. Every panel is in place, all the gutters. I'm just busy working on the doors. The store is in. Works mostly. And then on the floor here, I'm just gonna put pavers down. And then hopefully, once I've checked the temperatures and the humidity and all of that stuff, to make sure that nothing will die in here, then I'll start moving some plants in, hopefully by the end of the week. All in all, I think the process was fairly streamlined and I'm very happy with the greenhouse and it looks amazing. Here are some pictures of it uh, completed and finished. And uh, what I did was I decided to kind of just monitor it through the week before I put any plants in it. I did put a hardly philodendron into the greenhouse and I also put a regular monstera because i know they can handle a little bit of extra light so because i wasn't sure if the lighting was going to be a little bit too excessive did i put anything else in there no i think that was that was it uh and then by the end of the week i'd kind of got an idea that i'd put a temperature and a humidity meter into there that gave me a reading of the highest temp and highest humidity and vice versa with the lowest so I had an idea of what was going on, whether it was overcast or whether it was sunny and what was gonna be happening. So I started moving plants in by the end of the week. Um, I also had planned on paving the floors, but have run out of budget. So I've gone ahead and just left that just a plain soil basically. And I wet that down every day and it's actually working brilliantly to maintain a nice high humidity, especially at night when it cools down and the vents are closed, it really gets up to pretty much almost 100% humidity in there, which is great. Here I am in the greenhouse, finally set up and with the plants inside. Just some final thoughts on it. Um, would I recommend that you do this if you can? Absolutely, 100%. I've loved having my house back. I've loved having all the plants in one place. I can keep an eye on them. It's lovely to wake up in the morning, make a cup of coffee and come through here, 
have a look at all the plants. It's a beautiful way to start the day. Um, I can tell that the environment in here is so much better for tropical plants than my house is. So I'm pretty sure that my plants are just gonna thrive and do amazingly well in here. That is another bonus of having set it up. If you are thinking of getting a greenhouse, here's some tips and tricks that I found along the way that I think might be helpful. First of all, absolutely, you definitely need more than one person to do this job. Three people would probably be best and easiest, but it can be done with two. The second thing I will say is that you need a lot of time. You need the whole day, probably two days for a greenhouse this size. Dedicate the entire day to doing it. Create some shade for yourself. I got a little bit sunburned while I was here, even though I did have some shade available. So make sure you have a space that you can use to put things together outside of the sun, otherwise you are going to be burned. While you are building it, tighten things up so that they secure, but don't over tighten anything because there may be times where you're going to have to undo bolts to slide something in or that doesn't connect quite right. There are parts that kind of need to be adjusted once they're together that needs to like kind of just tighten up or slot in with other parts. So make sure you don't tighten anything too tightly. The way that this is set up, a lot of the time what happened was if you were working on the roof, you'd slide a bolt up through that little channel in the frame. Uh, you'd be trying to tighten the nut into it and it would slip out of your fingers and slide out and slide all the way down to the ground. So what I found useful was getting a little bit of press stick or something like that sticking it onto so that if you did lose a hold of that bolt, it wouldn't slide all the way through that channel right down to the bottom. It would get caught on that press stick and it was easy to bring it back up to slide it in. Pre-prepared the site. That's something that I definitely did a couple of weeks even before I got the greenhouse. I measured it out. I figured out how I was going to do it. I put some retaining small walls in um, and uh, filled it in and made sure that it was level so that by the time that it was time to actually build the greenhouse. Everything was prepared. I didn't have to waste time making sure that everything was ready and, and that would have cut into my actual greenhouse building time. That I went for um, automatically opening vents because I'm not at home the whole day. So if you're at home all day and you're working from home, that's great. You can check on the temperature throughout the day. You can get the manual vents, but the automatic vents for me have been great because I know that while I'm at work, if things get really hot in here those automatic vents are going to open and they are going to allow some air circulation and release some of that heat that is the brilliant thing that was the thing that i checked during that first week to make sure that it wasn't getting too hot in here for the plants and those automatic vents absolutely made all the difference for that even with the automatic vents i wanted to monitor the temperatures and the humidity through the day just to make sure that there was nothing untoward for the first week that this greenhouse was up. Make sure that the plants, these, you know, we've invested a lot of money in these plants. We don't want to put them in here and have them all die within that first week. Maybe also what I can suggest is starting with a couple of your more hardy plants if you are worried about the temperature and the environment in the greenhouse. Start with some of the hardier plants, put them in here, see how they go through the week before adding your more expensive, more um, finicky plants. Also keep checking on the sun exposure that your greenhouse is getting through the year because the sun does move around through the year. You might find that during summer, even though your greenhouse is quite shaded, during the winter months you might be getting more direct sun into it and then you'll have to look at putting some shade cloth up. I was hoping to not use shade cloth. I think the greenhouse is beautiful as it is and that's why I decided to put it under the trees and have them shade more naturally. But that there might come a time during the year where I might have to put up just a shade cloth barrier either outside the greenhouse or somewhere inside the greenhouse to protect the plants. Then my last tip is all of the polycarbonate panels come coated in a plastic. There is an outside side and an inside side so make sure that when you put the panels into the greenhouse that the outside side is facing outwards. That is your UV protection and uh, it protects both your plants and the plastic from deteriorating. So make sure that that is facing outwards. And also what I did was I removed the plastic from around the edges of that polycarbonate uh, panel on both the inside and the outside, just because um, it would make it easier to remove those plastic protective layers once the greenhouse was set up. I wouldn't suggest removing that completely before you set up, just because it's, nice to know which is the outside even if the panel is installed because you may have to remove it for some reason and then put it back and it's nice to have that as a reminder which is the outside 
but also second of all it protects those panels while you're moving them and using them and sliding them in and out from damage and that's the entire video i hope you guys enjoyed it it is springtime in here so we're having some amazing amazing uh, new growth on all of our plants here in south africa and i am excited to keep you guys updated on how it's going